Welcome back, spectators. Thank you for tuning in. Back by popular demand, we have another listener-submitted grail tale, and it is a big one. We are talking a blockbuster-level grail tale. A grail tale so big, you're going to need to call your mom and tell her you'll be late for dinner. Yeah, that big. So slip into something more comfortable and open your ear holes wide. This is episode 30. This is a conspiracy. That's what this is. Just begging to course its way through your veins. Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? You're into comic books, aren't you? I'm a nerd. But you do like comic books. Comic books aren't just for sad nerds anymore. Do you think we need one more? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Do you think we need one more? Objection, calls for speculation, move to strike. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea! All right, we'll get one more. <laughs> Spectators, a comic book podcast with Jake and Jesus. Welcome back, all you spectators, and thank you for joining us for the latest episode of Spectales. For all you new spectators out there, thank you for giving us a listen. We hope you enjoy it. Spectales is a comic book podcast that asks collectors and creators the curiously stimulating question, what's your grail tale? Each week, we explore news stories about the comic book grails we love and the epic journeys behind how they were obtained or how they inspired new creativity. We also dive into comic speculation and how, as collectors, we can help the hobby pay for itself. I am your mostly trustworthy steed of a host, Jake, along with my fearsome bearded buddy, Jesus. Jesus, what's cracking down in H-Town? Oh, man. A lot of uh, opposite of heat here uh, <laughs> that we've been dealing with. Uh, well, a little frigid go- down there, huh? A-, a little, man. I mean, to say the least, anything under like 90 is cold for us, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh you so, poor you poor baby <laughs> yeah man i mean hey hey it is what it is man yeah no uh, we're we're dealing with uh, you know 10 degrees here in nebraska uh but but i get it right like you guys are not supposed to be below freezing in houston yeah, texas man. that's just not yeah, how it's supposed to, to be i had to buy this new thing for my beard to keep it warm <laughs> uh, so <laughs> They don't make beard coats. They do not make beard coats. Don't I invented it. I invented it because oh, okay. this beard wins awards. So I got to take care of it. You know how people get, you know, insurance on, you know, their legs or whatever. Because yeah. they, they're soccer. I have insurance on my beard. So beard insurance. That's, what I have to do. that's right. Oh, man. Can I get pre-beard insurance for like the beard I intend to have at some point? <laughs> You know, there is that. It's kind of like liability insurance, but it doesn't really pay off. It doesn't really pay off. Honestly, if I'm willing to pay money, somebody will take it from me, I guarantee. Okay, all right. Today, today we are flying solo. And I'm not talking about that second-rate Star Wars film from 2018. I mean, Jesus and I have no, I mean, Jesus and I have no guests this week. We have no time to discuss whether you do or don't like solo, that Star Wars cup film. Uh, <laughs> great movie, great movie. I don't care what anybody says. One, probably one of the best movies. Oh my! It, no, it is not. That is not at all. It is. It is. <laughs> but what we do have today, what we have is a listener submitted Grail Tale. I always love when we get these episodes. And when I say this thing is an absolute blockbuster, I am probably not even coming close to doing it justice. So we're all excited for that. Hey Zeus, are you excited? Man, it's like a July Fourth Will Smith movie coming up for you guys. I was gonna, I was thinking Jaws. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's cool. I mean, we can go with Men in Black or or something like that. Or Independence Day? Are you kidding me? In, on, yeah. Indep- I know, I know. Bad Jaws, Boys. Jaws. Bad boys? Jaws basically invented the blockbusters. So let's not act like I was, you know, You're insulting it. You're way out of bounds here. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Before we get, okay, so hold on. Before we get into our regularly scheduled programming, let's cover some news, updates, and requests. So we are not ready. We're not currently ready to unveil exactly what's coming. But Jesus and I do want to let you spectators know that we've got some really cool updates coming to Spectales in March, right at the beginning of March. Now, we're not going to say exactly what it is and have no fear. We are not messing with the Spectales segments you know and love, but we're just kind of upgrading a little bit. We're doing uh, some changes we're going to talk shh, about. Shh, 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 shh. You what hear you, that? What are you shushing me for? Do you hear it? Yes or no? Only special people can hear this. Uh, 
Okay, well, the, the drums, no. the drums, the, oh the marching God. beat of the Scars Army. <laughs> it's oh it's God. coming, Jake. It's coming. I, I think that's enough. That's enough out of you. <laughs> uh, those That may or may not be a spoiler. Uh, most of you are probably shaking your heads going, what the hell is Jesus talking about? As you probably should be. Uh, unfortunately, he is not wrong in this particular <laughs> case. Uh, Scars the, Army is not wrong. The, it's the, right. The drums of wrong, war. If it's wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> oh my God. The drums of war are are sounding uh, in the distance, I guess. I'll play along just this once. So, <laughs> la- okay. That's, that's the news and kind of updates. We've got stuff coming. We are going to be unveiling more news as the month of February continues. However, we're not ready to announce anything just yet. So keep an ear out for that. And coming March 2nd, I believe, is the first Wednesday of March. We will have all the bells and whistles and new stuff out on display for everybody to hear. All right. Lastly, a small request to all of you spectators out there. Please, if you can, jump on to whatever service you're using to listen to our show and give us a quick review. It really does help us get found by other comic fans and listeners. If you could do that, it would be a huge favor to us. Thank you very much. All right. Everybody accounted for. Everything good. Great. Wonderful. Let's get on with the show. We have three basic segments for those of you who are new. We do recent pickups, then we do a grail tale, and then we end with speculation. Jesus always kicks us off, so have at it. All right, man. I have a a cool, I I think, uh, recent pickup. We talk about this a lot about, you know, the hobby paying for itself, and some people either have been indoctrinated already, already know how to do it. Some people might be new to it. Some people wonder why. Um, and we've talked about the reason why. Why It's because this hobby sometimes, you know, for the, the books that you want can get a little bit expensive of their first appearances, Silver Age, Golden Age books, what have you. Um, and even just, just reading, man. I mean, if you look at my pool list, man, my, my pool list is probably a good 30 to 40 bucks a week right on yeah. on new issues it coming can out. be so yeah it can be yeah you know it can be so this is one way to do it so my recent pickup i picked up asm amazing spider-man the new one number 88 for new comic book day i was able to snag an a cover and a b cover i wasn't able to get any of the uh variants which obviously variants are, are uh more expensive or people are asking more for them uh so i got these books off the rack <clears throat> Three ninety nine cover price. The first, the reason why this book is important right now is the first appearance of Queen Goblin, which is a a, a new villain for uh, a Spider-Man. new villain for Spider Man. Yep. Um, so it's a big deal, right? New villains. Marvel doesn't do a lot of new villains or new new characters to begin with. So when they do, people pay attention. Uh, so this is one. So you picked it up for three ninety nine on New Comic Book Day, which was this past Wednesday. It's already selling on Instagram and on eBay for at least around 15 bucks. So if you wanted to, you know, start with the, the hobby paying for itself, you could have picked this book up at $3.99 or maybe maybe pick up two, right? One, one to read for yourself and one to keep and then one to sell. You sell it for 15 bucks and now you made $11 that can help you pay for another book or another thing you're reading or even a, a, a small key that you can potentially, you know, flip for another one. Uh, and then it continues to pay for itself that way. So I just wanted to highlight that. I think it's a cool cover. A lot of a lot of the, the variants have cool covers as well. Uh, but that's definitely something that, that can help you start paying for uh, the hobby. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting. This is a book, we, you and I have already talked about it because I was on the phone with you after I left my LCS. And... <laughs> I, I had a chance to pick up this book in cover A and cover B, and I passed it up. It, it's not on my pull list. The you know ASM is not something I am reading right now, and so I just I just passed it by because the books on the stand there, I I, I could have flipped them. I could have bought one or two. I could have probably bought three, right, more, mm-hmm. and because there was a stack there, and I think there were only a couple of cover Bs, but. I could have bought a few and flipped them. However, I'm not a reader of that book. And in this particular case, I just took a look at that stack. And me personally, I was like, "Eh, I don't want to go through the the 
the hassle of trying to sell these. And I want the books that are on the shelf not to just sit in my a box in my closet for the next 20 years. I figured I'd just leave it there for somebody who wants to read it. And while there are certainly other speculators in this area that probably went there and maybe even picked those books up to flip them, it was just not not for me. I think it's great. I, I actually always support somebody who wants to flip the books and help the hobby pay for itself because like many of the books I like to go after, they tend to be a little expensive. So I also will flip books, but in this particular case, I left that one alone. Yeah, and I, I think this is an entry level, right? I think that's why I wanted to highlight it because it's entry level. It's something you spend eight bucks on for two two copies and you get 15 out of it, right? And then you get to keep one. If you, if you really want to flip both, I mean, you can do that once you read it or whatever. You're just trying to, you know, maybe you don't you don't collect ASM, but you know that this book was going to sell for a little bit more than mm-hmm. the cover price. You pick up two, you sell both of them for, for $30. You just made, what, 20, 22 bucks? Yeah. And that helps you get your your Moon Knight books or your DC books that you like or whatever. But it's just it's just a way to break into it when you know that there's a new um, character coming out in, in a new comic book day. There's usually a lot. They're usually abundant. Not everybody has access to, to local comic shops. Some people miss out. They can't get there. They don't have a pool list. Whatever it may be. So there's opportunity there to help you um, kind of get the hobby to pay for itself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, on the other end of this spectrum for recent pickups, I am not going to be talking about a new comic book day book, which I've been doing a lot recently. Uh, I wanted to actually update the listeners. So in October, we did an episode on settling the man thing debate. And part of the episode was regarding which man thing book was the one to get because his first appearance as a magazine Savage Tales number one, and his second appearance is in, he's not on the cover. It's a Kazar book, and his first cover appearance is in a. It's actually his third appearance total. So there's a lot of books, a lot of different man thing books that are valuable that you could go after. At that time, I had actually decided to go in on. Savage Tales number one. This is a magazine and it is the first appearance of Man Thing. I decided that this was the one for me. I think there are certainly reasons why you could go with something else. But so back then I I bought the book and then I was going to send it to CGC. I got the book on eBay. I thought I had gotten a pretty decent deal and I I was hoping for a um, high mid grade. So like a seven. I did not get a seven. So that my update is the book has come back from CGC and there was a little bit of a stumble in there. The book came back from CGC and the label was crooked, which unfortunately tends to happen with magazines even more so than the comic books. So please be aware. However, it came back. It was crooked. I sent it back to CGC. They fixed it, but it really did take the better part of four months. I think on this, it it was, it was all of, if not, and it came back a CGC 6.0 white page copy. Nice. I mean, I know you were looking for a seven, but I mean, that's a really nice looking 6.0 plus you got the, the white pages that you're always looking for. Always looking forward to put into the conspiracy collection, which is my PC for those uh, keeping up. (laughs) Anyway, it's a great presenting copy. I really do like this book. The cover is a ridiculously cool Conan cover, Conan the Barbarian. He has severed the head of some poor sap, and he is raising <laughs> raising the head up, and there's blood on the sword. And this is all stuff that they could not do in comic books at this time. This was 1971, and at that time, because of the the – comic book code of america they could not do the blood or or that something that savage right so (laughs) savage tales number one in the magazine they were able to get really graphic so it's a wonderful cover the artist on it i believe writer is roy thomas and art by john buscema so big john big john buscema 
exactly. It, yeah, it, wonderful. It's a it, the gorge. The cover is ridiculously good. It reminds me of some of the Frazetta covers that I love so much. Yeah, I mean, for if you look at that cover, you you do a double take because you think it's a Frazetta cover. It initially uh, does look like the a Frazetta cover, and I have no problem with that at all. Yeah, I mean, what is it? Uh, how does that saying go? Something is the best form of flattery. Imitation. Imitation is, is the. A, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's one form. Oh, I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but it's it's go a look nice up cover your own there. idioms. We can't keep track of all the idioms <laughs> for everybody. Uh, uh it, it's a really nice cover, man. I mean, Roy Thomas, uh, the the wonder kid that was under Stanley's wing, wrote that, and then you got uh, very very awesome art. Uh, but does it fit in your in your long box, man, or your short box? Does it fit in there? It, it sits very nicely alongside some of my slabbed creepy books. <laughs> I've got a special place where I put all those books. I would tell everybody, but then you'd probably break into my house to try and get them. And I just can't, I can't abide by that. Well, we know it's at your house now. So thank you. Oh, uh, no, no. I had to, I had to go to my, my storage <laughs> unit to get this. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, so, yeah. So that, that's a good update, man. Uh, it sucks that, that it came back with the, with the jacked up label. But glad that CGC made it right for you, and and I still think it's a it's a really good copy of it. And and I wasn't I, listen. I didn't get depressed over it. I, I really love that I got the white pages because then I didn't have to reluctantly sell it to go and find one that did have white pages, right? <laughs> so exactly. I got that. I got the book. It came back, and now it is safely in my collection, which may or may not be in a storage facility or some protected <laughs> vault somewhere. It's not in my house, house. though. Don't come to my house. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's get into the grail tale because we've already built this thing up a little bit. It is a blockbuster of a grail tale. It is huge. We said something last week about it. We weren't even joking. It involves $30,000 worth of comic books, and that was just at the time of the trade. We've done some research, or I should say Jesus has done a little bit of research, and the trade is now worth even more, right? Just in the yeah, last man. couple of month, two months since the the blockbuster happened. Yeah, I mean, about two three weeks, I think, since it happened, or at least since we got wind of it. Uh, it's it's looking like, uh, and I, again, I don't know because I don't know, I don't know the other side of it, but at least on the on the comic book side of it, uh, it's gone up significantly. So it, it's a good story. Well, let's let's first go ahead and say who submitted this listener grail tale because it's always fun when we get one of our listeners to reach out to us and tell us about the story, about how they got the books or book in this particular case. I got to admit, I was not prepared for something this big to cross our path. I just didn't even know trades of this size took place. (laughs) <laughs> so the listener is at Compound Collection on Instagram. I, I should have the name, but I don't have it right in front of me. Ah, Justin, excuse me, mm-hmm. Justin. Thank you very much for submitting your listener grail tale at Compound Collection. I believe this is Justin and his wife, if I'm correct here. Yeah, go go follow him, man. A uh, bunch of cool books on his Instagram page. I was just going over it as part of the research. He has some other girls on there as well that weren't part of this trade, but definitely some cool books on his on his page. And thank you for submitting this awesome story that we get to share with everybody. Well, let's dive right into that. Hey, Zeus, you wanna you wanna do the honors? Yeah, man. I'll, I'll talk about it. Uh, I'll, I'll go over what he sent in, and then we can kind of discuss it as 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 it unfolds because again i I read this story like multiple times man because it's just crazy so let's start out he sends in uh his grail tale compound collection on instagram brief backstory he just wanted to give us a backstory so we knew why this was such a big um deal so first he says that he used to read and collect comics up until the late 90s after college he focused solely on star wars uh, with an emphasis on vintage toys. And as you know, we, we've talked about vintage toys here in the past, uh, vintage Star Wars toys, I think with uh, Jason from Certified Comic Shop and also G.I. Joe's he had too, which were vintage. So 
that I mean that's a, that's a big big um, community as well. Vintage Star Wars toys. He's bought and sold and traded thousands of items over the years, and he has a true passion for the films, including Solo, Jake, including Solo. So uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if he did that or not, but I'm Justin, assuming he does. If Justin a has great... a passion for the films, <laughs> I can tell you he doesn't like Solo. It's just <laughs> I can tell you the opposite. He loves it. He loves it. Justin, go ahead and let us know. Please, when you listen to this, settle this debate. Just let us know that you hated Solo, and we'll move on. <laughs> Thanks, during the, so he says so he, he continues during the pandemic his mother found his old boxes of comics and then something just clicked inside it reignited the fire and he's been on a tear making up for decades of missed opportunity and books he's been collecting again and he's been loving it loving it man so i think that, that that's just awesome in itself right there yeah, that's that, fun that, to, that's really fun to hear yeah so he's saying that I need to be said to appreciate the tale. So here it goes. At a local convention, he met a local collector and dealer with a wall full of the biggest books he's ever seen. He's a kind of behind the scenes guy in town, and he began to chat. So he finds out that his real passion is ding, 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 vintage Star Wars. Mm. And he is constantly trading all across the world. His comics for your toys. Uh, so he kept in contact for a few months and they finally decided to meet and he tells him this guy this dealer tells justin bring your best stuff that he has plenty to trade well he wasn't kidding if you name it he had it and it was all there and it was all on the table which i think is just that right there that 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 right there is, is amazing to me because people will say yeah i have all these books but i don't want to trade this one or this one not yet yeah. Or, you know, you'd have to blow me away for this one. But he just brought everything and said all of it's on the table. OK, so that that brings us to the following. So after a whirlwind hour or two, which I'm sure it just blurs together, man, because this is this is crazy. He decided that he wants everything he brought. Which is north of thirty thousand dollars in toys. Whoa. So now he knew that he could dig in with the budget. And he knew what he wanted, and he and he got a killer run, basically, in a few minutes. So you want to go over the books now? Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 do this. All right. So the first book, and this is in no particular order, man. There's no particular order. But the first book, Amazing Spider-Man 194, first appearance of the Black Cat, 9.4 CGC white pages. Very nice. So this, this is a book you've had, right? I uh, I did. I had it in a nine point six. No, and, I'm not bragging. I just I that's the book I had. And you traded it, right? I sold that. Okay, there you go. You that sold was it. that was one that I sold. So that's a hot book, though, right? It, very hot. <laughs> okay, next book, Fantastic Four number forty nine, first full appearance of Galactus, second appearance of Silver Surfer, eight point oh CGC. Cream to off white pages, classic Kirby cover. Yep, yep. So that and book right there is a lot of people's grill. Oh, First Galactus! Everybody loves that book. It's a great cover. Yep, yep. Great classic cover. And, and in an eight point oh, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Big book, big book. All right, next book, Tomb of Dracula, number one, first appearance of Dracula, Dracula. In the Marvel, uh, in Marvel comic books, uh, in a nine point six white pages. So, another big boy book. That's huge. Yeah. Nine point six. Holy crap! Nine, you know how hard it is to get that nine point six, man. Yeah. You know we got we got Blade here already. So there's vampires. Vampires are canon. Who's the biggest vampire of them all? Dracula. Yeah, absolutely. So, Next book, Avengers number one, four point five, cream to off white pages. Avengers number one. That's a big book too. Four point five is that's a hard book to get in any grade at this point because of you know when it was produced. But four point five, that's that's worth some serious cash. Yeah, yeah, and we talked about this with uh, with Swagglehaus recently that this book 
you know, is basically a sleeper, right? Like it should be worth more than what it's selling for uh, because of, of the, the MCU, right? Uh, but that's a big book right there, man. Yeah, agreed. It's one of those books. It's nobody's first appearance. However, it is the first team appearance, which is it's kind of convoluted, right? It's important. It's a really important book because of what the MCU has become. However, it's not Iron Man or Hulk or Thor's first books, but I would say this book, Avengers number one, is to me more important than all of those characters' second appearance. In my opinion, yeah, I, I think that, that this book should be valued higher than the second appearance of any of those characters. And I don't know if it's yeah. priced in that realm yet. No, And I, and I also close. think that it's, it's going to continue to climb. It's it just going to continue to climb, man. Yep. Yeah. All right. Next book. We're not done. <laughs> Werewolf by Night, number 32. First appearance of Moon Knight. 9.0 off white to white pages. Massive book. Massive. 9.0. What is yep. that worth? 10 grand? Probably, especially with... with the the show literally about to come out. He's going to be a big part of the MCU going forward. Big name, Oscar Isaac as uh, Moon Knight. I mean, and it's also a classic cover, man. I really like There's, the cover. On yeah, the I like the cover too. There are a lot of Moon Knight fans, and it seems like there have long been a lot of Moon Knight fans. Yeah, it's weird, man. I, I mean, I knew I knew some of Moon Knight. I knew who he was. I knew his 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 a little bit of his backstory. <clears throat> I knew a little bit about his um. Later on, they retcon some of it and they change it to multiple personalities and stuff like that, which is cool and different, right? That that's so. Whenever something's cool and different, you know, I always gravitate towards it. Uh, I haven't read any of the recent runs. I'm gonna, I'm probably going to. I'm gonna try to do it before the the Moon Knight comes out. Uh, but it, it's a big. I mean, that book just skyrocketed, man. Just skyrocketed. Yeah, it it's. I mean, it's in the next stratosphere, right? Like, I don't know if it is. You know, it's not necessarily in the same ballpark as that Avengers one, right? Like if that Avengers one was a 9.0, I mean, that thing would be worth $50,000. I'm guessing that's just ballpark, but I, I guarantee that that Bronze Age, it, within the Bronze Age, you could put that book within the top five keys of the Bronze Age, especially mm -hmm. right now. But I think it's going to stick around in that realm. Yeah, and that and that book is is selling the the Werewolf by Night the nine point oh we're selling for around seven grand right now. Oh, really? So, <clears throat> yeah, right around seven grand. Okay. Yep. I think it's okay. got, I think it's got space to grow. Yep. And then the last book, which this is a big book. This is I, again, this is a grail for anybody or a lot of people, right? Clone Wars number one, first Ahsoka Tano. But the variant, the variant, the limited variant, 9.8 white pages. Okay, so I, I got to admit, I don't know a whole lot about this one. What what's So I understand first Ahsoka Tana. What's this thing going for? This book, if it's the variant that, that obviously there's only one variant of it, so I'm assuming it's this one. The variant is limited to 1,000 uh, a a copies, and actually 100 of them were given to certain retailers. So it's really 900 that were really put out into the wild. And it's just, I mean, this book is going for 9.8. Recently, one sold for over 10 grand in just this one book. Over 10 grand? Seriously? Over 10 grand. Yeah. And so this book has gotten a huge bump also because we've seen her now in live action. And we know... Uh, Disney has announced a show, a live action show for her, which will also have a huge, huge, huge um, villain for her, which is Admiral Thrawn. Yeah, that's the one where, where she's on the cover with the, the she's like on a speeder or something. Yeah, she's on a speeder and <clears throat> Anakin is also on the cover. Yeah. So that's the book, man. That's that's a giant book. I think wow. any Star Wars fan, any Ahsoka Tano fan would would love that book. Uh, yeah, it says ten, one of 1,000 copies on it, yep, on the cover. Yep, yep. Holy cow. This is a photo Justin sent to our uh, 
our Instagram account. He sent some photos of the books and it is, yeah, it's, it's the one that you're talking about. Incredible. Mm -hmm. So that so, just that book alone is one third of everything already. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then you, you add a werewolf by night that's at seven, you're at 17 grand in two books and you still got Avengers, Tomb of Dracula, Fantastic 449 and ASM 194. Yep. So let me, let me just finish up his tale and then we can go into a little bit more in depth. So he says, whether it was upcoming, up and coming spec or just the love of the book, he's over the freaking moon. Avengers number one was something he and his wife had discussed as a key that they needed for the collection. Ahsoka, he feels, is a Star Wars grail and wants to trade toys that he worked so hard to secure over the years for something within the Star Wars universe. So that makes a lot of sense, too. So he has a story for each book and why, but that day will never be forgotten. He still has quite an extensive Star Wars collection on display, and he loves the franchise. It was just an opportunity to put all his hard work towards his newest obsession. Uh, so he says, and, and I just want to be very clear on these last two sentences. He, he says, thank you for all the great content, gentlemen, which thank you back. We appreciate you uh, as a spectator. Uh, but then he says, cheers and keep on finding those scarce, funny books. And this is, there's nothing. I mean, he has the umlaut on air. So, Jake, what do you have to say for yourself? Please speak up now. I didn't think so. Thank you. Uh, but that's the grill <laughs> tale from Justin and the compound collection. <laughs> yeah, the, the scarce army is real. I will admit to that. As, as annoying as Jesus's banter about this scarce army, I just want to point out to all you scarce army members out there. And, I, you know, I, whatever you guys, yeah, it's cool, but <laughs> The word is scarce. <laughs> uh, Jake, and that is why that is why you don't understand the scarce army. Uh, I apparently I am not a member, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> but man, just to go back, so a couple of things that he said, uh, Avengers one was something that him and his wife had discussed as a key that they needed for the collection. So I also think that that's really cool. That's something that him and his wife came up and said, you know what. And I think if you go look on his Instagram page, he has a, uh, a picture of that book and he calls mm -hmm. it the cornerstone of his collection. Right. And I, I think that's pretty interesting. I think we all do that to an extent that says, like, what's the book, whether it's it's uh, most valuable or most valuable to you. That's his cornerstone book. That's what he refers. To. Yeah, I got an Avengers one or check out my Avengers one, you know, mm -hmm. or or what have you. So. I really think that's really cool that he included that in there, that it was a, a decision made with him and his wife, which we've all said, guys, you know, if you need some you need some pointers on how to talk to your wife about collecting comic books, you know, hit us up at, at uh, Spectales. I can give you some pointers. <laughs> Always start off high, say, hey, this book, they want 15 grand for it, but I'm going to get it for five grand. Boom. That's 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 right there. That's that's an easy one. I don't that's think an that's easy one. even that argument still not working with my wife, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just thought that was cool, man. I, I think it's an incredibly cool story. I really liked the thought, though. Thirty thousand dollars in in toys. So, to me, let's back up. To me, he spent a lot of years getting these these toys. Now, my son has been for the last couple of years now collecting Star Wars toys. And he tries to get some in box, some he likes to get out of box because he likes to, you know, set them up in different uh, state, you know, scenes and things like that. However, I can't even imagine thirty thousand dollars worth of toys. My son really goes after the Clone Wars toys because that was his favorite show for a very long time. There's, a, you know, he's thirteen and there's already nostalgia, right, about the Clone Wars, mm -hmm. and so that's what he focuses on i imagine thirty thousand dollars in star wars toys probably includes a lot of the original toys from the 70s and the 80s i mean that's a long time that's a long time to collect something and then to almost swap it out and i don't mean that negatively but how would you feel right you've spent a lot of years of your life going after comic books and of course 
I get he did both, right? He was a reader, but he was also toy collector. And then to amass that much value in something and then just to 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 change over. Now, I I do like the part that he still has a lot he already still has a lot of Star Wars toys on display. It's not as if he went cold turkey and said, "Nope, they're mm-hmm. all gone." So, I appreciate that about it, about the story. To me, maybe I'm just too attached to everything that I have right now that I have a hard time saying, well, I could swap all this stuff out for something. I I haven't yeah. made that transition yet in my head. It's very intriguing to me to see it happen with Justin. Well, it happens a lot. So, I'll, you know, I'll give you a personal anecdote. Uh, about three years ago, 2019. So at the end of 2019, I, I bought a collection. Uh, and the gentleman who sold it to me, a little older gentleman, he sold it to me. It was about, I think it was 10 long boxes and like eight short boxes. So it was something like 10,000 books or something like that. And he, I mean, I, I got it for, you know, super cheap. He was trying to get rid of it. And I asked him, why are you trying to get rid of it? Because it had a lot of cool books in it, man. It had Star Wars 8, I mean, uh, Secret Wars number 8, the whole, the whole Secret Wars run. It had a bunch of Star Wars. Uh, the whole Star Wars 1970s run, it had some, like, I think Batman um, 359, the first background, had a bunch of cool books in it. And he said that he was quitting comic book collecting, cold turkey, hmm. and he was going into Funkos, that him and his wife really like Funkos. And then he was going to use that part, part of that money for Funkos and part of that money to remodel his kitchen. So that was his reasoning behind it. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I've thought about that as well. I don't think that'll happen to me just because I've been in it in three phases in my life, right? And and I love comic books. I love reading them. I love the medium. I love collecting. Um, but who's to say, like, sometimes I think people find out about collecting certain things that they didn't know were collectibles or, or people start collecting, like video games right now, video games, VHSs. They're starting to be collectible, and I think they're cool too. Like, I, I mean, I, I have some VHSs that I collect. I have some video games that I collect. I'm, I'm not like super into it, but it's pretty interesting, right? It's pretty interesting, and I don't think I'd do cold turkey. I maybe, you know, trade off a couple here or there to get some of the the movie because I love movies too, right? I, I try, I probably trade some off here or there to get some, some uh, VHSs that are maybe harder to find or something. But I, again, it's very interesting. I think you, you were interested in it. But it, it, and like you said, it was a, basically a long time of collecting toys to get into some comic books that, that are pretty cool. The other thing that was cool is he said the Clone Wars was a grail for Star Wars. And so he, he wanted that book in there. So I think that's also really cool. Yeah, he, he definitely isn't losing the love for Star Wars. Justin seemed to really just leverage the value he had on one side of his collecting habits to get more on another. It is an intriguing story to me. Because I couldn't put myself in those shoes to leverage one to get the other. But I'm still at a point right now where I'm really focused just on one. But you could also say during my Hulk 181 trade, I leveraged books I had that I didn't value as much as that one book. It's a very similar way, right? Now, I did it comics for comics, but I could have easily valued those comics less than some other thing whether it be collectible or something else. Yeah, man. And, and, and that, that's also, I'm glad you brought that up because that's also, you know, some people are really good at, at collecting comic books and finding value and, and creating value. Right. But maybe not necessarily good in other things. Like, for example, I wouldn't know where to tell you about toys, but I know like a lot about comic books. So I can build up comic books, the value there, and then trade for some toys that I want that I really don't know how to find or get. Uh, you know, at a good price or what have you, and I'd be happy. And then the person that get the comic books would be happy. Right. So maybe, maybe they have a, a specialization in one area that they're really good at and they're not as good in the other, but they still want to collect it so they can do that. And I think that's, that's basically leveraging your strengths, you know, and I think that's what he did here to get a lot of these big, big books. Agreed. Well, Justin, Thank you very much for submitting this. It was incredibly intriguing to both Jesus and I. We enjoyed it thoroughly, and we would absolutely 
welcome any follow-up stories. If anything happens with these books or you end up doing something else, we'd love to know. Uh, that, that said, everybody, please go and follow Justin Compound Collection at Compound Collection on Instagram. He posts a lot of great stuff and ultimately, it's just a really nice guy. I, I would recommend giving him a follow if you haven't yet. Yeah, and also, um, you know, that's also a testament that if you guys, uh, any spectator out there has a grail tail, it doesn't have to be $30,000 of toys or what have you, just any grail tail that you guys might have, feel free to send it in to us, uh, to our uh, Twitter at Spectales Podcast, right? Or our Instagram. Spectales Pod. At- yeah, Twitter Spectales is Spectales Pod. Pod. Instagram is spec underscore tails underscore podcast. Or you can always email us, spectalespodcast at gmail.com. Yep, we, we, we love hearing them, man. We really do. Yes, we definitely do. All right, let's move into our final segment of the show, and that is the speculation segment. So we talked a little bit about speculation early on, but I think it's fair enough to say that there's plenty other books to speculate on. So, hey, Zeus, I'm going to let you kick things off. All right, man, I've been wanting to talk about this book um, a little bit more after we've seen the recent um, book of Boba Fett. Um, There is going to be some spoilers on there if you're not caught up uh, in this speculation. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please skip ahead or, you know, come back to it after you're caught up to at least episode six of the book of Boba Fett. So I'll give you time right now to do that. That's the spoiler warning. That's a spoiler warning. So you want them to pause our show and go watch another show before yes, they're allowed to listen but, to you. Yes, but if you keep talking, they're just going to keep listening. So just pause. Well, no, what I'm saying no, is there you this go. is counterintuitive. Good We're trying Lord, to get listeners, Lord. not send them away. Oh, my goodness. Uh, have you can ever you have you ever hosted a podcast before? Do you, you know how this you, works? Can you let them go watch Book of Boba, please? Whatever. All right. See, so, you messed it up again. Hey, Zeus, there. take the wheel. Now they're back. Now they're back. So thank you for going to go watch and catch up on Book of Boba since Jake so negatively put it. Uh, but yes, so here, here's here's the thought process. In, in this season, there has been two gigantic reveals of, um, I, I wouldn't even call them, I guess maybe villains. One of them is women for sure. One of them is maybe a, a anti-hero, whatever they're called. But one of them is Black Chrysanthemum, the Black Wookiee, mm-hmm. that that is a huge warrior, awesome, awesome backstory. Yep. He deals a lot with Doctor Afra. They revealed him, and his book went bananas, which is Darth Vader number three. It skyrocketed in price. People were looking for it, looking for the 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 um, the variants, and it's a cool book. And he has a lot of cool covers, a lot of cool backstory. So it's a cool book, cool character. Then in Episode Six. They introduced another huge character from the comic books and from the lore, uh, Cad Bane, which was a bounty hunter. Yep. And that book has gone ridiculously up as well, which is, I think, Darth Maul number two, which is also a cool cover, a cool book to have. So I just want to point time- out, uh, sorry to interrupt. I just want to point out mm-hmm. that Cookie from Just a Little Podcast, when he was mm-hmm. on our show, he called out, he predicted Cad Bane. He told yes, everybody he way back then, he said, better get this book. I think he's going to yes, show up. Yes, he did. So I want to give yes, credit did. where and, credit's and I think due. He, I think he has a 9-4 of it, too, I think, he that he posted recently on his on his Instagram page. So, yes. So, what I'm getting to is this, right? I I also, and I don't know what episode, but if somebody can remember and tell us what episode. <laughs> <laughs> I speculated on this book. So, this is the first time I'm speculating again on the same book. First time this happens. But it's it's with merit because of what I just mentioned. Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren number one is the first appearance of Ren, which Kylo Ren is named for. The Knights of Ren are named for this character we know has been cast for a future Star Wars show. And it's cast by a fairly big actor, Christian Slater. Yep. So when this character shows up on on uh, live action on the next Star Wars show, which is could be Mandalorian or could be the Sokotano show, whatever it is, uh, it's going to pop. 
Right now, you can get this book for around 20 bucks in, in high grade, right? Raw. In, in um, 9.8, it's going for about 200 bucks, I think. And some of the variants are going for under 200 bucks that are really cool variants. So there's also, this is another thing that we've talked about. Right, currently, right now, in the Marvel um, comic books, in the new comic book day, there's a, there's a run called Crim Crimson Rain that's also talking about the Knights of Ren. So they're bringing all these Knights of Ren, all this stuff forward, all this stuff is coming. Uh, they're, they're wanting to have that in people's minds about the Star Wars uh, universe. And we're talking about the first appearance of the guy who named them the Knights of Ren and of Kylo Ren, Ren himself. So this is a book I think is going to pop. I think once he's out there, it's going to go big time, uh, just like Cad Bane, just like Black Chrysanthemum. Pick up this book. This is the second time I'm telling you. Don't tell me I didn't tell you to pick up this book. I have several copies of this book already, and I'm looking for some of these variants. So that's my speculation for this week. What do you got, Jake? Uh, I just want to, I want to, you know, for once, I want to compliment you. I think that was a good spec. I think it was a good spec originally, and I think it's still a good spec now. I would maybe say that he might be showing up in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the one because it would be interesting to see how Ren got started. And you know, I, I don't know how the timeline works. I am not a, a Star <laughs> Wars fanatic. Maybe we need to get Cookie or Jason on to, to really mm -hmm. solidify that information. But it would be interesting and, and I could see it potentially happening in the Kenobi series too. Yeah, that's a good. Th I hadn't thought about that, but that's a good. Th I think he has something to do with Darth Maul as well. So, I mean, he would be in the Darth Maul book. So, maybe that 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 is where he would come out. So, that's a good good uh, point. All right. Well, I have a spec of my own, and I want to before I get into what the spec is, I want to say that this was inspired by our friends over on the Dear Watchers podcast. Dear Watchers is a weekly podcast that covers the What If comic series. Rob and Guido do a fabulous job going through the series and discussing how those stories have inspired some more recent storylines. However, in addition to the What If book that they're covering, they do a book that may have inspired the What If and a, a book that that What If may have inspired after it. So there is a lot of comic knowledge being shared on this series, and it's a really fun series to listen to. I would highly recommend everybody uh, listening to that after they listen to us. Okay, so something that they talked about. Oh, hold on, hold on. Are you literally telling them to go listen to another podcast? Do you know how podcasting works? <laughs> Have you done this before, Jake? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to put that in there. I just wanted to put that in there. I may or may not have <laughs> known this was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so a book that I, while listening to Dear Watchers, a book that they kind of turned me on to, it's not one that was new to me by any means, but it was a book that I thought about maybe in a different light after listening to their podcast. I immediately was like, oh, why don't I have a copy of that? It is Avengers number nine. This is the first appearance and death of Wonder Man, Simon Williams. So the book was written by Stan Lee, art by Jack Kirby, and Wonder Man is an interesting character, and there's a number of reasons why he is intriguing. Now, he was his first appearance and his death may have been in 1964, but he was later resurrected in the West Coast Avengers series and has multiple tie ins with Vision. This to me is incredibly intriguing because we know we're going to get more Vision. Last time we saw him, it was White Vision, right? And West Coast Avengers, a lot of ties there. Wonder Man is a character that has shown up in West Coast Avengers. He has, once he was resurrected, he had multiple storylines that could be pertaining to Scarlet Witch, could be pertaining to Vision, could be just another great character for Marvel to resurrect out of the comic books, out of the unknown realm, 
and bring them into the MCU. We know that they are going to be injecting a lot of new characters. I'm not suggesting this is going to turn around and be a book that you're going to want a year from now. I don't necessarily know. What I do know is that first part of the Avengers run, the early stuff, Avengers number one through 12, 18, 20, all of those are mildly pricey books. However, the keys, the keys within that run, when they go off, they get very expensive very quickly. We're talking thousands. Right now, Wonder Man's first appearance is relatively affordable. I don't mean to say that this is a book you can go out and find for $20 unless it's a really ultra low grade, but you can find some moderately priced books that once again, I simply believe it's a great book to have in a collection if you are an Avengers fan, if you're just a fan of even West Coast Avengers to get the origin of this character. But I think it is an undervalued Silver Age book. That's why I wanted to pull it in. It really, it spoke to me as soon as they started talking about it. I was like, why the hell don't I already have this? <laughs> it, it really is the type of book I love to go after. I love Silver mm -hmm. Age keys. I love those under the radar characters, right? To me, this rings just like X-Men, uh, the first Kazar, right? You know, mm -hmm. when the first Silver Age Kazar, I should say. And those are the type of characters I love to chase, right? This is a hero. But this is a hero with a lot of baggage, lots of baggage. Yeah, and you mentioned West Coast Avengers and White Vision. Also, uh, Kate Bishop has a lot to do with the West Coast Avengers in the newer run. So they're definitely they're definitely playing that part up uh, as far as trying to maybe hint at West Coast Avengers, maybe you know melding both of them um, together. So yeah, anything anything that has to do with West Coast Avengers, I think is is a good spec right now. Yeah, there are no rumors going on. I have nothing to point to that would suggest really that this is a character that they're going to use outside of the fact that when you go back and read the original books, right? You can find a lot of lines, a lot of correlations to characters we're already seeing in the MCU with Wonder Man, with this character. So there is an opportunity available. It's not to say that they are leaning that way. It's kind of like Man-Thing. There are some connections to Man-Thing within the MCU, and there is reason to believe that he could show up. However, nobody knows. So I like to get my, I like to cover my bases. I like to look at these type of characters, Man-Thing, Kazar, Wonder Man. They're all undervalued in my opinion because the moment they show up, None of these books are going to be at these prices anymore. Yep, and and that's agree. that's the whole point of speculation for, for me. And I have a lot of fun going after old Silver Age books. <laughs> I'm trying to find them because they're so hard. They're so hard to find. It's hard to find in decent, decent condition. And for the same reason, if anything ever comes out of any of them, whether they're animation or live action, those books pop off. I mean, even a hint of them, I think. Count Nefaria had a hint of something at one point, which I think is Avengers 13 or 12 or something. And then that book kind of went crazy for a while and it's hard to find in high grade. So yeah, definitely, definitely good to, to spec on some of those uh, Silver Age books. That is correct. I agree. All right. That is going to do it for episode 30. Ep can you believe that? Episode 30. We made it wow. to the big 3-0. You know, it took me 30 years as a human being to get to the big 3-0. We did it in less than a year. Can you believe that? We're about to get into the midlife crisis stage of the podcast. <laughs> right, right when we hit March, right? Yep. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. If you have something to share with us, please reach out to us on our social media. We will have all of that in the show notes if you want to go and reference where you can contact us. Otherwise, thank you so much again for listening and have a great week.